Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Fagan Radian here at the Naval Submarine League's annual conference and trade show in Northern Virginia, number one gathering of U.S. submariners from around the world to talk about the services strategy, future budgets, and more. And we're on the show floor, which has got all the technology up front, but also artists and authors uh, here on the floor as well. And we're talking to Pat Anderson, uh, who is of McLean. One time, uh, uh, you, you had a data company, you were a stockbroker, you were a fellow uh, GW uh, graduate uh, from George Washington University, and you've written this incredible book, The Grand Era of the USS uh, Nautilus. Thanks very much for joining us. Well, thank you very much for having me. Um, and so what drove you to write about the Nautilus, uh, which was, um, one of the ships that actually got me in this business were my dad's stories about USS Nautilus and USS Enterprise, and he, um, you know, saw Nautilus coming to New York Harbor after uh, her crossing of the of the North Pole, and Very just thought exciting. that Jules Verne's right. uh, vision had been realized uh, uh, in this ship. Tell us what what motivated you to write about Nautilus. Well, um, my husband was the second commander of Nautilus. Wow. His name was William R. Anderson. He took command in June 1957, the day after he turned 36. And he uh, immediately strove to explore under the ice. There had been quite a bit of talk uh, in his shop, in Rickover, Admiral Rickover's shop, about exploring under the ice, which required a nuclear submarine. You couldn't do that safely with a diesel sub. So in 57, he and um, a sister ship uh, went up to the northern Atlantic and he had three excursions under the ice. Uh, it was a successful mission in many respects, but he didn't make it to the pole, And but he did manage, after creaming both periscopes and losing power to a gyroscope and many other things, he did finally join his NATO for, uh, the NATO forces for the very first um, excursion and, and war games with NATO forces. Um, and he ca came back and uh, was supposed to be secret, but somebody let the cat out of the bag. And that sort of started the scramble to do some real under ice explorations. Um, and it was uh, an incredible time because I think people have a tendency of not realizing exactly how game changing a capability it was in terms of what nuclear power could do on a modern, you know, with all of the other systems that she pioneered? Well, um, the thing about nuclear versus diesel is you don't have to surface to keep going, and you won't run out of battery power. However, uh, as I've talked to several people here at this symposium, even today, going under the ice is uh, very dangerous. You have to be very ca cautious. And uh, one commander I talked to said he didn't sleep for three or four days, and that was the case with my husband. The reason I wanted to do something about Nautilus and write this book is that it's been 60 years since that crossing. And many people, uh, you know, history today is uh, not taught sort of like it used to be. But as I say in some, to some people, before Neil Armstrong walked on the moon, and before John Glenn orbited the Earth, there was the wonder of Nautilus. So all there was, this was the event of the decade. Um, and uh, there were um, a whole bunch of reasons where that President Eisenhower wanted to do this was to demonstrate, obviously, U.S. technological superiority. Um, but it was also, you know, as you said, a very challenging mission because the ship found that the ice sheet gets a lot closer to the seafloor than people had anticipated because. Nautilus really had to pioneer how you do under ice operations. Oh, absolutely. Um, the difference between the entering the under the ice pack from the Atlantic versus the Pacific is the Pacific is very shallow, and we didn't don't realize that the Atlantic is very deep. And what they had to do in '58, they went up and they nearly got stuck uh, between the sea floor and the ice overhead. And, uh, but mainly it was because the sea floor is very flat and the ice very deep. So they went back to Pearl Harbor for 30 days and then they tried again and the ice had shifted and they were able to find a deep water channel. The, the, uh, there's uh, actually under, underwater mountains under the ice pack. I mean, it's quite deep in some areas, but just when you first enter the pack, 
it's pretty shallow and very dangerous. Um, and uh, and it's been really a pleasure. We talked to um, Al Kellen, uh, obviously uh, a pioneer and helped pioneer the Skate mission, uh, which was the first uh, submarine to surface at the pole, and Fred McLaren, of course, who was the first person to map uh, the uh, oceans uh, up north, you know, getting him the opportunity to become uh, Explorer Club president, uh, of course. And I think Fred did four, three or four trips uh, to the North Pole. Right. I think Al did two. Um, uh, talk to us a little bit about the challenges of putting the book together and what were some of the things that even though you've had an intimate relationship with the the commander. topic and the commander and the, and, and the ship as well, uh, that you learned in the process of putting together? Because it really is three books in one that it, you've tried to it, accomplish. It truly is. I, with uh, all things Nautilus, uh, I learned, first of all, that there was a diesel submarine named Nautilus that had a wonderful uh, career in World War II, wonderful in the sense that a very successful, she sank many ships, and she earned the presidential unit citation. Under command of Bill Brockman, the legendary uh, commander of Nautilus. Well, you've taught me something now. There you go. But at any rate, the All Things Nautilus covers all the, uh, from shell to su submarine, the chambered Nautilus, all the way to through Jules Verne's Nautilus. And you know, there were a lot of Jules Verne fans that uh, thought the real Nautilus didn't come up to the standards of Jules Verne's Nautilus, but I assure you it did, it exceeded it. In terms of the grand era, I start out with the creation, uh, or the concept really. You know, the power plant was developed in Idaho, and that was had been under development for several years before they even left the contract to General Dynamics to build the Nautilus itself. And uh, so, but they stuck with their schedule. Uh, Admiral Rickover said it took uh, the Navy longer to change uniforms than it did to build a nuclear powered submarine. At any rate, she was underway in 1955 on nuclear power, and in 58, she went under the Arctic ice and was a great Cold War victory for the United States, and my husband was very, very proud of that. Um, I, 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 can, uh, I can only imagine, and I did, I made a mistake when I was selling the book. It's the Nautilus Trilogy, and I got focused on this part as opposed to all uh, three uh, elements of the book. Right, well, uh, the, uh, the trilogy goes from shells and then the Grand Era, which is the concept, all the way to retirement. You know, the Nautilus today is a national landmark and has the same, uh, carries the same weight really as the USS Constitution in Boston. She's cared for 100% by the Navy like the Constitution, although she's not an operating ship like the Constitution. And you can go on board, it's a wonderful experience to visit the Submarine Force Library and Museum and uh, and you can go on board. Um, it's a it's a good time. My family has done it many many times. Uh, we would go to Long Island to see my in-laws, and then we would take the ferry and then spend the day in New London, see the museum, uh, also visit Mystic uh, Seaport, which is right down the down the street uh, from there. Now, where can people get uh, the book um, and also your holiday deal that you've got going? Well, uh, you can log on uh, to the net, uh, nautilustrilogy.com, and uh, you can read about my uh, holiday package, which is if you can uh, contact me, my phone number is on the website, and uh, I will mail a holiday package in Christmas red or Christmas green, uh, a lovely uh, presentation to anyone you like. Fantastic. Pat Anderson. Thank you so much. Thanks very much for writing the book. Um, I, I got it yesterday and absolutely enjoyed uh, looking at it. Thank you so very much. I appreciate the opportunity to uh, share my story a little bit. This is a wonderful history book. It's told uh, not so much narrative. I didn't write a lot. I just gathered a lot of material, invitations, magazine articles, uh, menus, speeches, all kinds of different things in addition to a lot of photographs. And you asked me what I learned. I learned that the men on this boat were admirable in every sense of the word and I have great admiration for all submariners at this point. And, and uh, the commanding officer who led them. Absolutely. And they were all um, well-trained, hard-working. It's not easy to be a nuclear submarine. A submariner, and uh, but they all work hard, and I admire them all. 
and, and also their wives. They wouldn't be able to do it if they didn't have good wives backing them up. <laughs> no, absolutely, absolutely. Or, or increasingly good husbands backing there them up because it's going to be only a matter of time before there's going to be a female commanding officer. Well, I, probably there's one now somewhere already. Pat, thank you so much. Oh, indeed. Thank you. Thank you.